for tuning in to BZB TV. My name is Florence. If it's your first time tuning into our channel, we appreciate you for stopping by. And also, make sure to smack the sub button for us. That way we can smack you right back with some useful pro AV content, tech trends, and products in our industry. We've got a great episode ahead. So we always talk about 4K HDR on the Hive. Today, we decide to put together a video to break down 4K and HDR and why it's becoming the new standard for TVs and monitors. You're all probably familiar with 4K resolution. You might even be watching this on a 4K screen. 4K basically is four times the resolution of full 1080p. HDR or high dynamic range is the technology that will allow your TV or monitor to display a wider range of colors. On top of that, HDR also expands the range of contrast. Contrast ratio and color accuracy are two of the most important factors when it comes to how a TV looks. HDR broadens the scope of both contrast and color significantly. Currently, most new TVs are capable of HDR, which has more detail in the bright and dark areas of an image, creating a higher dynamic range compared to non-HDR content, which is pretty much everything that you've ever watched. Older content these days is referred to now as SDR or standard dynamic range. A TV's color gamut is all the colors possible for your TV to create. The current HD TV standard is Rec. 709. Unfortunately, Rec. 709 is ancient. You're probably watching this on a Rec. 709 monitor and it may look just fine. However, the human eye is capable of seeing beyond Rec. 709 standard. To get more realistic color, two aspects need to be improved. And that's color gamut and bit depth. HDR improves on these two aspects, and the color gamut that HDR uses is Rec. 2020. Rec. 2020 is the color space defined for 10 and 12 bits in 4K and 8K TVs. Bottom line, Rec. 2020 color space standard can reproduce more colors not shown in the Rec. 709 standard. Expanding the color gamut will allow TVs to produce more realistic colors. Bit depth is the other aspect, which is a bit more complicated, no pun intended. TVs don't have an infinite color palette to choose from, nor can they mix colors to create a new color, like a painter is able to do. TVs are digital, and each color is represented by a value. Current HD TVs use an 8-bit system. What this means is your TV can show 256 possible shades of gray, Oh, and every other color. To put this into perspective, if the color red has a value of 20, it may be a very dark red that's close to black. However, it's still red. On the other end of the spectrum, if the color red has a value of 240, well, this makes it a very, very bright red. An 8-bit system has the potential of creating 16.7 million colors. Combine greater bit depth with wider color gamut and color realism takes a big leap. <laughs> 10-bit color can represent 64 times the colors of 8-bit. When you do the simple math, this will equate to over one billion colors, which is a massive amount when compared to 8-bit color. What this means to you is if you were to compare an 8-bit image to a 10-bit image, let's say you have the TV side by side, the gradients in the 10-bit TV will look smooth. You won't see the separation of color because the range of colors a 10-bit TV can produce. Even more is 12-bit, which is 64 times more colors than 10-bit. Dolby Vision HDR supports 12-bit color, but you'll need a TV that can produce enough brightness to actually see the difference from 10-bit to 12-bit. Since we're on the topic of brightness, another aspect to consider when it comes to HDR is nits. Now a TV, display, or even a PC monitor outputs light. The measure of that light is called nits. One way to remember this is the more nits, the brighter your monitor gets. Nits has nothing to do with the brightness settings on your TV, display, or monitor. To give you some perspective, an HD TV 
or even a PC monitor can output about 120 nits. A high-end display can probably double that, while a screen in an average movie theater is able to output about 50 nits. But how about the newest 4K HDR TVs currently in the market? Top of the line HDR TVs are able to output over a thousand nits, some reaching 1500 nits. Recently at CES 2018, Sony released a prototype 8K television that's able to output 10,000 nits. That's remarkable. So what do nits have to do with HDR? Since HDR has to do with the details in the shadows and details in the highlights, a TV that is not bright enough may not be able to deliver HDR content. Better performing HDR TVs are able to output about 600 nits, while higher end HDR TVs can output well over 1000 nits. The promise of HDR is you can see what the eye can see. The ultimate goal of HDR is to make displays resemble a window to another world. With that said, 4K is pretty much standard in all TVs today. However, HDR format is a bit different. Currently, the most popular format is HDR10. There are also many devices out there that support Dolby Vision and HLG, while other formats, namely Samsung's HDR10 Plus and Technicolor Advanced HDR, are still getting started. As I mentioned earlier, there are many TVs that can display HDR, but there are different HDR formats out there. If you plan on using the HDR capability of your TV, here are three things to remember. It's critical to match the HDR format your TV can support with your HD source. So for example, if you end up purchasing an HDR capable TV that supports Dolby Vision HDR, your external HDR source, it may be a Blu-ray player, must also support Dolby Vision HDR, including that Blu-ray disc that you're using. Next thing, you also want to use an HDMI cable to support the bandwidth of HDR. Lastly, make sure your TV and your external source support the right versions of HDMI and HDCP. If there are other devices involved in your setup, make sure those devices also support the same format, HDCP, HDMI, as well as the HDR format you are using. It's possible you might have an HDMI extender, an AV receiver, or even a matrix switcher in the mix. Make sure those devices support the format of your HDR. Otherwise, you may get downgraded to 1080p or even a blank screen. As a matter of fact, if you're in need of an HDMI extender that supports HDR, we recently made a video, so we'll drop the link below. If you're shopping for one, I'm sure this video will help you out. The topic of HDR can be complicated. However, in theory, they can all coexist in your TV while streaming or watching Blu-ray. For now, do your research and make sure to hit that subscribe button for us. That way you don't miss out on any tech trends, AV news, and products in our industry. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. Give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, drop a line below. We'll be happy to engage with you. Again, we appreciate you tuning in to BZB TV. My name is Florante. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.